Hey everybody, I'm Lisa from Lisa and Rashida. As you probably have been able to tell this week, because we're in the throes in the midst of all of the things that are going on, what I call is one of the two pandemics. One, we have COVID-19, and the second, we have just a violent movement of racism. I don't know if it's a violent movement of racism or if people are actually starting to come together. Nonetheless, we have preempted most of our shows, our weekly um, topics this week, to talk about some of this stuff because it's important that we not only try to show the the fun things that can happen and what we consider the American dream for us being a same-sex couple, but to also show the things that we have to deal with and dealing with uh, racial issues and justice, all of those things are part of the fabric um, and the things that we have to navigate as we go through this life. And you will note that, you know, we've, even in our, uh, when we first started out our effort, we talked about that in fact we would talk about racism we would talk about uh, the sexism all of those things so they're a part of what you deal with when you're trying to live in this america and have a health, happy healthy life um, but for the most part we've, we've been we've done okay it's just that when the whole country comes to a standstill like it is now you know we just gotta stop and pause and make sure that our viewers are able to um, get some perspective on things so if you don't already do this subscribe to our buttons Subscribe to the show so that you are notified when we put these episodes out this week. And again, like I said, we'll be doing more. We're going to preempt everything else with uh, little pieces that will help us better adjust. Earlier today, and so I wanted to come on and talk to you about a couple of conversations I've been having because they've certainly helped educate me. And it's not something that will be brand new to a lot of people. But I want to, again, give me some perspective. I happen to have friends in every economic range. Uh, Rashida and I have friends who are billionaires, some that are millionaires, some are middle class, and some that are what would be considered poor or poverty. It depends on what the guidelines are. But we have people in all of those categories, and some of those people are all colors and shades. And Rashida's family in particular, um, are, her parents are interracially married. Her, her, rich, her biological parents were married. She's the product, the sole product of that relationship. And then they both remarried, and so she has a uh, a mixed family, if you will. So, and then they're blended on top of that. So, and, and in my family, it's the same thing. We're blended. My younger brother is um, half Asian. And then um, I have also Asian and I am Native American. And so we are accustomed to having these kinds of open conversations, but having them with love. And so America's got to learn that these are things we've got to talk about. But nonetheless, I had I have a, a friend who is a, um, a, a white gentleman who lives in Tennessee, and so don't make up your mind about him. He's a really great guy, and he and I were talking about some things on Facebook, going back and forth, and one of his friends chimed in. Now, it's happened on both sides. One of our friends on each side of the conversation chimed in, and one of my friends took offense and was saying, well, who is this joker, and why is he on your page hounding you about this stuff? And I came to my friend's defense because what we are is open to conversation. We're open to any constructive conversation. And I need my friends to understand that. And I hold my friends accountable. I went on his face page and Facebook page and I made a comment and one of his friends jumped all over me. And so it led me to ask the question because it's not something, even though he and I cover race relations, it was not something that I'd ever asked him before. Um, in African-American communities, I can tell you for sure that when we're having discussions and you introduce somebody outside of the race, I'm pretty, primarily somebody who's Caucasian, you get kind of get the, is it okay? Are they cool? You know, because we don't know. We live with this every day. Who's going to drop, drop the bomb on us in the conversation? What should we be looking for? What should we be listening for? And those are very real fears. And so um, I didn't feel like he came to my rescue right away. And I don't know that I wanted him to, but, you know, it was a mixed emotion thing. So he and I kind of took a, took our conversation offline and said, listen, hey, this is what happened. So he said, you know, you, what do I do? How do I, how do I, how do I, how do I make it better? What do I do? And so it started me to thinking about what do we want people to do? How do we help? We can, as African-Americans, make it better on our own. We didn't start it. Uh, we're not training our kids. I don't think we are, at least in mass number, training our kids to hate other races or to tell other races that they're inferior. So how do we start it? How do I educate this white man about how to do that? And so I said to him, I found myself trying to outline some steps for him. And I thought maybe they were noteworthy of sharing here. Uh, one of the things is 
ch checking yourself, yourself, the way Michael Jackson said, man in the mirror, how do you really feel? And really being honest to examine that, examine how you feel and examine the company that you keep. Do you know or don't you know or who are the people that you hang out with? What will they really feel about race relations? How do you respond if I come to your home to visit because you've invited me and find out that your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law, whoever's at the dinner, uh, because you never had the conversation, how do you ensure my safety? How do you do that? And so that's one of the real things you can do. You can take the temperature and find out who is it that you're engaged with? What do they think? You have to know because potentially you invite me into a dangerous situation or potentially I invite you into a dangerous situation. If you know anything about me, you know that's not the case because I have cleared the pathway for you to be in my house and be in my presence and I just don't roll that way. And I don't have any friends who would, even if they thought it, would ever say it in front of me. Um, and so he said, you know, I never, I don't think I do, but let me check. And so he went and checked and I applaud him for that. Um, and he said, well, I do have one friend that I think is a little racist. I need to have a conversation with him. And so he says, he comes back and he says, well, you know, I don't, I've watched him do some very kind things for a lot of people, but I think it was just the way he was raised and he doesn't know how to shut it off. It's just that simple. I don't believe that for a minute that children are born racist. We, we aren't. Kids will play together all day, but it has to be taught. And so now he is, here he is a 40, potentially 50 year old man who has to be untaught. Can we do that? I'm not sure. So he says, well, I think he had a bad experience. And I said, well, um, ask him. So he comes back, he says, well, here is part of the, the, the response. He feels like black people in particular get certain treatment or better treatment. They get, uh, what is he said, uh, particular TV shows or, um, Stations like BET, Black Entertainment Television. You have schools for black people. You have this, you have a Black Miss America pageant or black pageants. And I said, yes, we do. But we have them because when we tried to enroll in your school, you said no. So our options are to either let our take our kids and let them be discriminated against in your school. Actually, if you would even let them in, you said, no, I can't bring my child to your school, but then you're mad at me for creating an environment for my child to be educated. Hmm. That doesn't make any sense. What, what was my response or what was our response supposed to be? Was it supposed to be, okay, just let your children grow up and not learn how to read and write. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. You have BET or had BET. Well, we still have BET, Black Entertainment Television, owned by a black man so that black people could have, we couldn't get on television. And so to make, put positive black images on TV, there is a, a station that is designed for that by a black man. He didn't go to somebody else and get the money and take your money and do this, something you wouldn't want. It's his money so that he could create an avenue, a platform for black people. Again, were we not supposed to take care of ourselves? If you go to a restaurant and they don't want to feed you, would you not go to the chain of restaurants next door? That just doesn't make any sense. So I get it that they don't get it, but I don't get it why they don't get it. Um, but it's, it's a reality. There are some folks out there who just believe or who are not, I don't want to say lack of educated, but not educated about why. We have historically black colleges and universities because we could not get in to white colleges and universities. If we could, we probably wouldn't have them. There would be no need for them. It's, it's simple. So, you know, what I'm saying here, what's my point? My point is you got to have these conversations in order to advance the dialogue because none of this changes without more education. Maybe if he just understands that now, it'll change for him. I'm not sure, but the friend that I was speaking to, he said, well, I never even thought to say those things to him. Maybe that will work. So maybe that coming from another white guy to a white guy will say, hey, listen, knucklehead, they have a TV station and they have HBCUs because we wouldn't let them go to ours. It, same thing with restaurants. We have restaurants and things because we couldn't come to yours initially. 
So what's the point? The point is you've got to have the conversation. You've got to have the dialogue. You need to take some steps. And some of those steps is really about being authentic and true and invested in what kind of America do you want. All right, that's it for this one. And I'll get back with you soon. Stay with Lisa and Rashida. Hashtag us. Follow us. You know, I get all that stuff wrong all the time. Instagram us, Facebook us, all of that stuff. But we're lo lo uh, lucky to have you, and we thank you for following along. Peace.